who we are or who are you a simple question like that when you when you hear from somebody the answer is quite simple right we are human beings right am i right but let me ask you again who are you and that's a question that really penetrates to your inner self right i'm trying to get inside you and trying to ask you who are you and that is something that many people get baffled around really don't know what it is now let's let's take it uh, quite simply right i mean from the ground level who you are probably everybody knows everybody understands let's go like 10 feet 50 feet higher try to see who we are or maybe 5000 feet right 30000 feet from a plane who are we right let's go a little higher from a moon or still above tell me who we are all of a sudden the higher dimension that we take suddenly changes our perspective of who we are and we kind of see how minuscule or what we are really thinking we are and doing every day what we do is quite different right so i'm going to talk about today is who we are and trying to you know pin upon some of the very dramatic or very uh deep questions that people generally ponder upon uh, let's understand can anybody remember you know when you were youngest possible what's the youngest memory you carry like one year old two year old three year old what what do you re really remember anyone what's the youngest age you remember you were two you can remember Okay, I want to ask you beyond that. Anybody can beat that two score? Okay. So, what happens when you are like one year old or a five day old? Were you you that you are, or were you someone different? That's the question I want to really pose to you guys. Okay, is it anything different than what you were? like we all know we were one cellular at time right we were all one cell science has proven that so what were you then when you were one cell versus what you are now is there any difference think about it and what what some of the spiritual people have really figured out is the spirit in the one day cell and the spirit now is kind of the same some people call it like we were nothing some people call it soul and some people call it spirit but that is exactly the same when you are day one and now what is differing is your mind and body you are like compounded so larger so much larger <laughs> right and your mind has changed you have learned a lot of things so that's the difference that we see from day one and day now right there is a concept of spirit i don't know how many of you believe in it anybody believes in spirit right so actually what i just explained to you kind of tells you why there is spirit right because day one you didn't have the mind and body that you have today do you agree there has to be something called spirit or some kind of energy that you had on day one which made you living so i want to ponder upon the next thing is where is the spirit and we understood there is day one spirit but where is it now is it still there or is it gone is it there is it there it is there where is it how can i see it can i figure out where is my spirit so that's the question that many people think about really don't know what it is so i want to really give an example there okay what analysts have figured out is when we try to act upon let's take a, let's take an example like a male okay he's acting sometimes like a father sometimes like a husband sometimes like a lover okay he's taking different roles but when he's experiencing as a father he's experiencing just as a father he's not really experiencing the husband role right 
So what's really happening is each one of us really takes upon a role, given the context. So all of a sudden, I'm a father when I see my kids. And all of a sudden, I'm a husband when I see my wife. So there is a different context that my mind really switches me on to, and I take different roles. So there's different roles I take every day, every minute, every second, every instant of time. So what's happening is I'm becoming a father. I step back, and then I'm becoming a husband. But what's actually happening when I step back? Between those two roles that I, I capture, I am the real me, the spirit. Between the two roles, it's like as fast as an interlacing uh, cinema that you see, between those two roles, you are switching very fast. In between, in the trans transient state, you are actually your spirit yourself. Right? So that's where you can experience your spirit. And sometimes you do get into that trance mode, and you don't see the time. That's the important thing that people have figured out. In that trance mode, you don't realize time. There are other ways to reach out to that spirit in you, OK? And most of us do that every day. One thing is prayer, meditation. When you pray, actually what you're doing is trying to connect to the outside energy with your internal energy, which is your spirit, OK? So there are different times, day in and day out. Even now, you're like swapping in and out. And there is a transient mode wherein it's just your spirit who's active. Your mind is really not there, OK? The latest analysts have figured out that mind and body are actually the same thing. There are only two things that people have. Earlier, people used to differentiate spirit, mind, and body. Now what they say is it's just spirit. Mind and body is one thing, OK? So that's the, that's the realization people have made up. Mind is nothing but part of the body, which kind of starts in at day one when, you, like, when you're a kid and starts rolling like the body rolls and captures all the learning knowledge that you capture. But that's really something that's captured knowledge. With that, I want to you know, emphasize on one thing. Do I really need to be spiritual, understand my spirit? Or I can just be in ignorance, bliss, just leave it? What do you guys think? No need to think about the spirit. No need to think about what's really inside you, or the self-aware, right? Let me explain you what's the importance of being self-aware, OK? When you take a vacation from Verizon or wherever you work, right? You go out, and you have a week's vacation, but you start thinking about your work. You're just constantly taking up your cell phone, pager, and still working. How does it feel? You're ruining your vacation, right? You're not realizing the most important thing that you are on a vacation. Same thing is happening. You're not realizing that you are a spiritual being, a real spirit, came down to do something else, but you're busy with stupid work, the day in and day out. You have lost the focus. I'll give you a simple example. Uh, I have twin kids, okay, twin boys. What happens is I see them like fighting for a small toy, very tiny toy, and I know Guys, you got to understand, you don't need to fight for that. It's useless, right? But they keep fighting. They, at their perspective, at that level, they don't really understand what they should not be doing. It's only when I see at my six feet height, or for example, for you guys, when you go like million feet higher, you can realize that that trivial fight is really not necessary, right? That's what spirituality can bring in you. If you become spiritual, you can think what you need to do, what you really need to accomplish, what you really, really need to have. Do I really need a 2,600 square feet house? Or it's just something I'm pushing upon myself and making it hard and you know suffering internally to get to that 2,600 square feet house. It's something that goals that I set up. Somebody might come and say, I can't live in 2,600 square feet house. I need 5,200 square feet house. He is killing himself. He is killing his spirit by raising those goals for himself and then making it difficult for him to achieve that. That's where you make your spirit suffer. So my 
message to you guys is think carefully, get to the higher level, get to the higher dimension, figure out what your spirit really needs. And that's what is going to help you. So go back and think and see what you really need in your, in your life. Thank you.